6,000 pounds, almost dead on the nose as you see it here today. Although keep in mind that weight can vary a little bit based on options present and exercised on a specific RV. 267 J Flight coming back to us here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan for another season. Best in class warranty, best in class roof rating, best in class tires, best in class turn light safety package. A lot of best in class features going on here. Super slide, bunks, camp kitchen, just about 30 feet on the nose. A lot of good qualities there. If you stay tuned just a little bit, we'll have the slide closed all up so you can see how she looks like in travel mode before we go outside. But first, kind of the main qualities, what you're going to look like, uh, or be looking at rather, during your, your daily living in the camper. This being a full super slide, it really opens up in here nicely. Another thing that's kind of sharp here, you only find it, eh, I don't know, half the time, if that, in this kind of budget range, and that's a six foot nine ceiling. You very often run into a conventional six and a half foot industry standard height. Jayco builds all their J flights six foot nine tall. You'll find the same quality on a Catalina here at Halet RV and a full Wildwood. The uh, X lights will be the smaller member of the Wildwood family. They kind of split the difference. Um, they are also using a really good lighting package, and a hundred little things I'm going to show you in this video. It's like that lighting package, having all those lights on one switch instead of having to click, click, clickety clack your way through this thing, that's not the reason to ever buy a Jayco. It's the combination of a hundred little drops in the bucket. But very quickly, those drops will fill that bucket. Like, for instance, centralized air conditioning. That is not standard at this price point. It is standard on a J-Flight SLX, however. That's one of the reasons why I like have them here at Halet RV. That being said, there is no trailer in this class with optional central air that we won't go ahead and option in, but keep that in mind. You do have the ability to upgrade that to a 15,000 BTU air. Sometimes we'll do that here, sometimes we won't. This is a smaller coach. It doesn't always need that extra AC power. It never necessarily hurts, but it can be a little more problematic if you're going to go boondocking and have generators, you know, to try to juggle there. Um, so under that slide floor, there is a radiant barrier. That's that aluminum foil looking bubble wrap. That will help keep the RV comfortable. The tinted windows help. Those blackout shades really do a heck of a number as well. And I love the updates. The little accent end wall right there on that uh, slide face. It's little things like that that just really kind of, you know, give you a nice impression and open, airy, comfortable experience over time. Now we're a bunkhouse, but if we take a look, you can see that over here the whole super slide gives us some very handy bonus uh, seating space. What's also very cool and not very obvious, is that both, well, uh, well, yeah, both of the seats there in the slide have some pretty good storage below them. So we saw it down in sleeper mode, but this is technically called a jackknife storage sofa. It's basically a, got a built-in storage chest below it, which is pretty darn handy. You're going to use that for your not everyday things like extra blankets or pillows or board games or something for the kiddos. You could very easily put some little totes with play things in there for rainy days as well. This is one of the few brands, it seems, that's still giving us a storage cabinet above the sofa uh, instead of giving us just bigger windows. I get it that windows are nice, but this is more of a utility trailer, I think, than a glamour trailer, and every little ounce of space counts. Now, another kind of standout quality in this class, it's not exclusive to JFly, but it is more the exception than the rule, is that all of the cabinetry is pocket screwed with hardwood cabinet doors. They don't use particle board cabinet door frames. They don't use uh, staple cabinet styles. Everything is all screwed together. Um, also see how when they're doing an overhead door, they actually have a, uh, a flip up metallic strut to hold that in place. Now, in case you're curious, this right here is Miss Stacy Stewart and, and one of her uh, the members of her design team. We hear all the time, uh, geez, they obviously don't have women designing these trailers because the colors are atrocious. Well, Jayco does, and I think that's one of the reasons uh, they've, you know, maintained such a, a line of success, including things like the farmhouse decor. She was a big part of that over there. She's got her own theme song. She's like, Stacy Stewart, comfort and style. I don't, I won't do it anymore. It's, it's mostly just a chorus on repeat. You see the storage below the dinette, back to the task at hand. I'm so sorry. I go off on these tangents. I gotta really, like, control that. Maybe I need medicated. I don't know. Coming over here, one of the things we're looking at is the optional 12-volt refrigerator right here. So it's giving us more cubic foot of cold storage space. It cools much, much faster, like at least four times faster with active uh, compressor cooling versus passive absorption. You can run it in transit. It's completely safe and legal everywhere. Uh, 
One of the other things I like about this Norcold right here too, it just has an off switch. I can just turn it off. Some of these 12 volt fridges have difficult to discern ways to turn themselves off. Some of them you have to hold it down or push a button for 10 seconds or put your left leg behind your right ear and say Beetlejuice three times in the mirror or whatever. You don't have to do any of that here. You just button, done. Makes sense, right? Off button, turn it off, makes sense. Since we are taller, we've got bigger cabinet storage space. But what I love about this one is Jayco really left it up to you how you want to use it. If you want to, these two shelves are adjustable, removable, whatever you want to call it. There's a hanging rod in there. So you could take out one shelf, use it as clothing and or dresser. You could use it as pantry. You could use it as any combination thereof, whatever works for you. And since we are taller ceiling, it gives us the opportunity for bigger, taller cabinets, which is always welcome. Down below the sealed edge thermal foil counter here in the kitchen, you see a nice little spot for a wastebasket. Nothing major, but at least you don't have to have your, you know, Walmart bags tied to the cabinet doors or anything. Uh, and, and take a look, they're still using full extension, ball bearing, gliding, plywood drawers. They're not using, uh, again, particle board frames on their drawers. And I always forget to show this, and I'm going to try to do a better job of that this year. There's almost always little storage pockets uh, around the back side of, uh, you know, kitchen storage spaces that I often miss. Clutter cutting shoe garage right there, right when you walk in the door below a miniature lower pantry tainment kind of shelf. And as we work our way up the uh, pantry wall, well, I'm sorry, the entertainment wall, not pantry wall, you see where your TV could be mounted. This is a basic camper. Um, we don't really see this as something that's built with entertainment focus in mind, although you could very easily throw a TV and a swing arm in there and be good to go. But what is kind of cool is Jayco still is including not just Bluetooth and HDMI stereo, but still DVD. So that if you do go camping on a rainy day or you don't have good Wi-Fi reception, frankly, most campgrounds that do offer things like, you know, Wi-Fi and data access, most of those, the bandwidth is, is pretty garbage, you know? I, I've camped in a lot of places and every time I try to hook up to the Wi-Fi, I, I feel, uh, I, I don't know guys, I, I, I feel, uh, well, it's just not worth it. I'm not gonna get into the details. <laughs> It just, it makes me feel like I'm back on dial-up. <laughs> What's nice about this one is uh, you can access the thing with the slides closed, like in its entirety. And it's kind of nice because uh, RV companies used to always put the dinette up front and then the sofa in the back of the slide. And it never made sense to me. And then all of a sudden, somebody got wise and went, oh yeah, that, you know, it stops us from being able to access things because the sofa sticks out not as far as the dinette, as you can see here. But one of the questions you're gonna have, like you can get back here, obviously we just walk past the whole kitchen, the fridge, all that stuff, very easy to get to. We've already kind of seen the bunks. The question's going to be the bathroom door. Now obviously you can get here, but they'll, you'll wonder, does it clear the slide? And it clears it by a mile. That's what's one of the coolest things about this one right here, is that if you are just in, in a parking space overnight, you can, you know, get your family in, you could still feed them, you could still sit them down if you had to. You just don't want to be doing jumping jacks on that slide floor. Short of that, <laughs> you're you're going to be just fine. It's very pack em up friendly or, you know, travel stop friendly. Turtle friendly. Ninja Turtle power. All right, resetting a second and closing everything up to give you a good clean look at the whole kitchen space here. Let me pan you around. Then we're going to go back and check out those bunks. Now, I mentioned you have the ability to upgrade the air conditioner to a 15K unit. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. I want to address something on the way, though. No floor vents in an SLX, but they do put floor vents in a full J flight. Why the difference? Well, uh, when your cabinet ducted heated like this, it means it's a little easier to keep the RV clean, a little bit less upkeep, but it is less effective at actually heating the RV. When you have heat vents in the floor like you do have in a full J flight, you heat the RV much more effectively. So a full J flight is going to be better for extended season use, whereas this is going to be very common three season spring, summer, fall use. So that's why they do different heating systems in different RVs, uh, even within the J flight lineup, um, so that you know it, you have the thing that kind of is appropriate for your style of camping. Now, again, it's a hundred little details here. Like if you look at our AC vents, I should have gotten one that wasn't so far away. Let me stretch. All the vents can open and turn, which is kind of nice. Not every brand does that. And if you get up here, you'll see that you have some form of power outlet in the top and bottom bunk to power the kids' stuff on a rainy day. You also see that the kids have a handy little handle to help get themselves up and down so you don't have to throw your rotator cuff out. Each bunk 
has its own curtain so that the kids aren't fighting for a curtain or the kid on the bottom bunk isn't pulling on the curtain and ripping out the track from the ceiling, which can happen. Also, according to The Dangler, which is what this is called, and I am too much of a 10-year-old not to laugh at that. Sorry. Um, the uh, Jankos have some best-in-class bunk ratings. They are 300 pounds per sleeping space. This is a two-person sleeper. It's a double bunk, so that's a 600-pound rated bunk top and bottom. There's a lot of little things that we just covered there that are all really big deals. But something else that's easy to miss is when you're shopping, guys, lift stuff up and look where they, you don't think they want you to look. In a Jayco, you're going to find stuff like plywood. You're going to find a higher grade material. They never use secondary materials in here. That's part of the reason they have better weight ratings. Now, if you notice, the bathroom sink is separate from the toilet shower area. And sometimes that really kind of throws some people off because you're like, if you've never camped before, you think, oh, that's weird. In my house, it's all in one room. Well, remember you're camping, you're playing house. You're not living in a house right now. It's a little different. So if it is late at night, and someone's using the potty or taking a shower and you got to get one of the other kiddos to brush their teeth or whatever, you have the ability to get two kids around at one time now, in theory, although I, I know that is not as easy as it sounds in uh, just that simple But as a, as a father myself. My point, though, is that you have that ability. And you do have a dedicated bathroom sink so that you're not washing your bathroom hands in the uh, kitchen, which a lot of people appreciate. This is foot flush, so it's easier for the kiddos to do their business. And frankly, nobody wants to put their face near their business, if you know what I'm saying. You see around here, shower surround paneling and a roof skylight. Those things, again, are not standard things you can always expect to find in this class and in this budget in the RV industry. And you also have that power fan up there. Now, this is also a taller shower, which a big old goofball like me appreciates. And just to give you kind of a bead on the uh, leg room, just a quick little shot of, you know, my legs around that thing to give you uh, the, the general gist of it. It seems weird. The toilet paper holder is mounted on the door, but it actually makes a lot of sense because when you close the door, there you go. And a little parental sanity feature, a locking bathroom door. Shocking how many even big fifth wheels don't have things like that. Spinning us around the other direction, you see that the uh, bedroom does have sliding pocket privacy doors, not curtains. So you can completely close that off and enjoy your own uh, privacy at night, whether it's just, you know, one person up there, like a single parent with a couple kids, or, you know, grandkids, or aunts, uncles, whatever. You get the idea. And you can see that there is a big clouded glass window in the door to give us plenty of light exchange as well. That's something that, again, not every brand always does. So I want to point those things out where I, uh, you know, have the opportunity. And by the way, you don't just have to use the light switch. You can still individually flick the lights if you want to. Now, uh, walking our way up here, SLX J flights all have Camp Queens. And frankly, almost everything in this ca class and category has Camp Queens. A full J flight, uh, like a 28 BHS that we'd have here at Halo RV, they're uncommon that they do have a true queen. Most conventional campers with aluminum skin don't have that. You see that you have breeze windows and big ones on both sides of the RV. Wide open side stands, uh, very CPAP and phone charge friendly. Now, if you're not really a big fan of the Labatt blue light up here, that extra light switch right below that uh, hanging closet over there, that can turn that off and on. So you don't necessarily always have to have that thing. Uh, something else that's also kind of handy is if we open that up with x-ray vision and take a look, you can see there's a big chunk of storage on there. And it does exchange from inside to outside, like from the pass-through to under the bed. It's all one wide open cavity. Now over here, you see that hanging sign right there kind of giving us the idea. All SLXs uh, in these eight foot wide models, they are all now wired for solar. This right here is indicating to you, if you do install a solar package on the roof, this is where you would mount a charge controller because this is where the wiring all comes down to meet it before it runs off to the battery. Also, you see this handy thing right here. What is this? Well, it's a handy little TV bracket. Now it's position in the bedroom is not necessarily ideal, but the thing is, most of the time if you're gonna use this, it's gonna go outside. And because you have those two sliding panel doors on the back of the Island Entertainment Center, they can't exactly mount it straight across from the bed. But again, this can kind of go outdoors and give you a secondary use as well. Well, that's where this thing right here comes in handy. If you do choose to add a TV to the RV, 
that's where you could mount one. You'll see that your mount goes right there. You got some hookups below. We'll get a better look at that camp kitchen when we swing around the backside before we head upstairs. On the way though, we are going to pass the optional Moride stable steps that we like to put on these J flights here at Halet RV. Uh, the standard would be the fold out steps that you'd find, you know, conventionally. Those uh, stable steps though, especially in a bunkhouse like this where you've got a whole lot of little meteorite bodies bouncing all over that celestial space in there, it is darn handy to have those things. It takes a lot of that jump and wiggle out of the, uh, you know, entry and exit experience. So a very unconventional quality in RVs as a whole is uh, a two-year warranty. You see a lot of stuff with three-year structural, and what's almost unheard of is what Jayco does even here at what you would call their smarter class campers with a two plus three class leading warranty. I'm not aware of anybody else who's doing that. They have the best in class warranty available out there. More coverage, more peace of mind than anybody else in a trailer uh, like this. Where I think that's very beneficial. Jayco is a brand that's always really spoken loudly and proudly to return uh, buyers, referral people. They've really earned their reputation as a, a upper tier brand. But things like that warranty, uh, I think, especially in this class, are awesome for potentially first time owners or someone who's upgrading from a pop-up or a, a no-slide camper to get the extra space. You'll see up front there, simple things the SLX did not used to have. As more of the price-sensitive J-Flight, the SLX did not used to have a power jack from the factory. It did not used to have a propane tank cover for those double uh, propane tanks. Those features are now standard uh, with uh, this generation, which is kind of nice. They have always been good for for a number of years. Uh, the big pass-through compartment, and I specifically want to walk in over here on the driver's side because this is the side that very often a lot of brands will not enhance with a large uh, door. Now you can see that easy lift bed uh, allows for a full inside out pass through compartment right there. But that big 30 inch wide and I don't know how why I haven't be measured the height of that door in a while. So it's kind of slipping my memory because I got a lot of details and stats to remember and a lot of different RVs here at Halet RV. Um, basically means easier to get in and out of the cargo on both sides. Very handy if you're like tucking the hitching away when you reach your campsite because you can put your hitching over here and you can keep your lawn chairs on the other side. Now a little tip from your Uncle Josh, the RV nerd, if you're going to put your hitching over here, put anything down on that linoleum. I don't care if it's a rubber welcome home mat. I don't care if it's just an old scrap remnant of carpet. That will help prevent uh, the hitching from digging into that linoleum. That will make the RV look nicer when you're done with it. It will be worth more on trade and resale and cost you nothing more than an old rug that you replaced out of the bathroom. You know, it's very handy. Now these are not People ask all the time, is that Four Seasons? Is that Four Seasons? What is everything Four Seasons? You have the ability to option an enclosed underbelly onto these, but that alone does not magically make something, quote, Four Seasons. Nothing in this class, at this budget, is, quote, Four Seasons. Absolutely nothing. I don't care what anybody tells you. It's, they're not. And the reason I can say that with confidence is because no manufacturer who builds a trailer like this has ever bothered cold chambering testing and proving anything to the contrary. So, you know, that's where I get my data from. However, you see that it does have nicely dark tinted uh, windows to keep the sunshine out. Also helps keep the nose neighbors out. Also helps keep the sun fade out of the camper and keep your furniture looking good. But that slide floor, all Jayco's with slides, the slide floor has a radiant barrier in it to help regulate, especially the air conditioning to keep your family a little more comfortable in the summertime. Now tucked behind that super slide is again, a couple of things you don't usually see at this class. Now when you get up to the full J Flight, Cherokee, Wildwood, Catalina, you start to find stuff at Halet RV, like black tank flush and outside utility shower. But at their more smarter class price point stuff, the, the campers like this that are just the facts, ma'am, you don't usually find those things. But on a Jayco, you do. They're very consistent that way. Also something they're very consistent about are safety items like their J Smart lighting system. That stands for signals, markers, and reverse travel. So if you look up top in the upper right and left corners, you see extra tail lights. Those are extra blinker lights to go along with your lower tail lights. So that if you do have something like bicycles on the back here, or even that spare tire or anything, lights up high are easier for the driver behind you to see. They're more likely to spot them. They're more likely to know you're turning. Additionally, all the associated side clearance lights amidships over here will blink with those upper lower tail lights so that people know when you're changing lanes, just like a semi-trailer. Now that costs a few bucks more. 
especially in a price sensitive class like this, it's not the kind of thing most brands will do, but Jayco doesn't like to sacrifice safety. Um, back here you see the spare tire with slip cover. Hopefully you never need it, but just like your main tires, that is a Goodyear Endurance radial, best in class, rated for up to 87 miles an hour. Hope you never ever are driving that fast. Um, along with the turn signals though, is the reverse travel lighting. This is not much to look at during the day, and unfortunately we're not open at night, so it's hard for me to get night footage, but those are extremely bright backup LED elements, so that if you're utilizing the rear view camera prep, or if you do have a spotter, or if you're just using your own mirrors to pull in and out of a site at night, you'll actually have a, a pretty good bead on you know what's behind you, have some good visibility without trying to do the flashlight air traffic controller communication method. Now water heater down here. This is another best in class quality on the J-Flight SLX, but it's like an invisible one. It's one where a lot of brands don't do this because a first time buyer doesn't know the difference. So, you know, if two trailers look the same and one's cheaper, why wouldn't you buy the cheaper one? Because sometimes it's not about what you can see, it's about what you can't see. Normally, in this class, you get a six gallon water heater that is gas only, usually, not always, usually auto ignition. So you don't have to come out here and light it manually. But that's it. So it's a six gallon vessel that gives you just over 11 gallons of hot water per hour. Jayco still uses a gas and electric and auto ignition and fast recharge six gallon water heater. So that means this can give you up to 18, well, I'm sorry, 17.8, technically speaking, gallons of hot water per hour. Absolutely best in class water heater. And in a camper like this where you've got a lot of bodies potentially taking showers, even quick military style showers, can you use up your water supply. So it is nice to have that there. And their low profile camp kitchen is one of the, the best pound for pound things I think I see out there. You got the mini fridge outside, which when added in conjunction with that optional 12 volt fridge we have inside gives you over 10 cubic foot of cold storage space, which is awesome. Uh, you've got a real sink with a real drain, not a dog dish, which is again, very uncommon in a lot of trailers. You've also got that little two burner stove top out here. What's nice though, is this is strutted. So it will keep itself all the way in or out. So if you bump it, you're, it's not going to just fly closed. Let's say that you had this lid open, it's not going to hit the lid and splash hot grease all over the place or your kids or your dog or your favorite chair or your new white shirt or whatever. You get the idea. It's going to stay where you put it and it doesn't require any little mechanical bullet lashes. It's just simpler. I also like to peek back here on a J-Flight because even back here, let me get you down in there. Come on camera, there you go. You can see it a little, you can see plywood. Even where you're not looking, just like under those bunks, you're going to find plywood in your Jayco stuff. That's just Jayco doing Jayco things right there. They don't use secondary materials. They're always using a little bit more prime material. Uh, you know, when <laughs> the joke is that when Jayco cuts that plywood to shape and the sawdust hits the floor, they sweep that up and they send that to the other manufacturers to build their RVs. <laughs> now the roof of this thing looks really wild and cool today. So this RV was built. It was waiting for an air conditioner uh, due to supplier shortages. So they hadn't installed an AC yet. So it accumulated a little bit of shipping dust in the shipping yard before the AC was put on. Well, we had some rain overnight. So a little bit of water was sitting on top of this thing. And as it was towed here, the water kind of washed its way down and left these interesting little, almost like makeup tear tracks on this thing. This is super cool looking up here. Anyway, back to the point at hand. So I was just talking about plywood. I was beating my chest about that. It's because we're walking on plywood up here. You know what other travel trailers have plywood roof decking? Folks, we, we carry a lot of them. Other than Jayco's, other Jayco's, I'm not aware of other trailers that use actual plywood roof decking. That is one of several aspects of the Jayco Magnum Trust roof system that gives them the best in class roof load rating. Roughly 50% more. Now. Things like Cherokees, Wildwoods, Catalinas, their roofing still generally holds like 2,000 or 2,200 to 2,800 pounds depending on the model, and that's still plenty. So some people will argue, well, the Jayco roof is overbuilt. Why pay more? Why does it weigh more? That's, that's a waste. There's a lot of people who go, I don't believe in anything being overbuilt. I want to build as good as it possibly can be every single time, Jack. Well, that's why we carry different campers here at Halet RV. There's merit to both of those lines of thought. 
and we present them both and let you decide. If you appreciate that, definitely follow along to our YouTube channel here so you can always stay in the loop because we do try to be pretty fair about how we present things. Now, one of the other really nice, uh, more recent updates they've applied here, we kind of touched on it in the bedroom area, is that these, even here at their Smarter Class Basic Camper Series, J Flights have roof solar prep. So if you look at this floor plan, there's just tons, tons of open space. If you wanted to go crazy with an off-grid solar package here, you most definitely could. And we can assist you with that at Haywood RV. We have the people, the know-how, the suppliers. We can install any, any degree of solar that you prefer. That's not hard for us to do. Um, it can be not terribly expensive. It can be very expensive. It depends on what you want to do. There is no answer to how much is solar. Well, solar varies greatly by person to person, and to really know how much you need, we kind of got to sit down and have lunch with you and really get to know what you plan to do with it. And if you give us that opportunity, I don't think you'll be disappointed here at Haywood RV because that's who we are and what we do. And in case you're curious, my little footprints, the little dust on the roof here, that's not going to be there when you take the RV home because one of the things we also do at you at no additional charge because we don't do hidden dealer fees at Halet RV is we uh, have a full reverse osmosis uh, water purification system to give your RV a streak-free cleaning before you take it home. Pretty darn nice. We also walk you through the RV and show you how it works at no additional charge, which amazes me how many places don't do that or charge you like a $2,000 prep package. We, we just don't do that stuff. Anyway, if you appreciate that, the only thing we don't do is hidden dealer fees. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo camping, everyone.